Hi, this is Mr. Ford from Mr. Ford's class, and I want to talk really briefly about ESD protection. Now, during your course of A+, we really kind of scare you about the whole ESD thing, talking about the fact that only 30 volts required to fry any computer components, and, you know, we're talking about several thousand as far as what you feel when you zap your friend from rubbing your feet against the carpet. This is not as big of a concern as it's made out to be during your basic training. But we have to drill this into your head so that you understand this concept. Also, when you're dealing with customers and they're trying to fix their computer on their own, you might get a lot of questions about, you know, how do I put in a memory stick or how do I put in a processor? And it's important that you do warn them about the possibility of destroying their computer if they get in here without knowing what they're doing. For those of you in warm, humid environments, I'm from Houston, Texas, so we're actually we're in Humble, which is a little bit north of Houston. It's very warm, very humid. ESD is not as much of a concern. Lived in Iowa for a couple of years, it was very cold, very dry, you were zapping everything. So if you're in a warm, humid environment, you don't have to worry about ESD so much. If you're in a cold, dry environment, you better take extra precautions. Now from the PowerPoint, you saw that you can use some fabric softener on the carpet, humidifier if you need to, uh, if you have a serious problem with the ESD. For the most part, most people will find what I'm going to show you helpful. We have, of course, underneath here, the anti-static mat. This should be standard for any tech bench. Anybody working on a computer should have some sort of mat underneath. Now, you don't want to use aluminum foil, as we so showed you in the PowerPoint, although there's some websites that say you should. Do not use aluminum foil. ESD mats doesn't cost much. You can get it from Fry's or any computer retail store, anybody that contains computer parts this will work just fine. So always work on your mat. The second thing you should have in your toolkit is an ESD strap. Now I don't really use mine very much, but what you would do is you put the strap on, then you would take the alligator clip and attach it somewhere to the metal chassis. It can be anywhere you want, but it has to make contact with the metal chassis. Remember from basic physics or IPC or earth science or whatever classes that you've taken, electricity only moves when there's a difference. If you have a high charge here and a low charge here, it's going to go to the low charge. So you want to equalize the charge between you and the computer. It's okay if you have a charge. As long as it's equal to the computer, there's not going to be any real flow of electricity, which means your components aren't going to take a hit. So this is an ESD strap. They don't last forever. There's a tiny resistor in here. Every now and then you need to get a new strap. The only time, only two times I'll actually wear a strap for the most part is when I'm installing a processor or installing the motherboard. That's when I like to be a little extra cautious. But for the most part, this thing sits in my toolkit off on the side. What I typically do when working on a computer is I rest my arms, my forearms, against the case itself. As long as you're in constant contact with the metal frame of the computer, you should be okay. When I have my students work on computers, I always make sure that some part of them is in contact. If you reach in like this, the first thing that's going to take that hit is whatever component you're working on. So rest your elbows, rest your arms against the computer case. You'll stay equal with the case. You won't have any problems with ESD, and you can leave this thing in your case.